Hi friends, today is gonna be my wrap up for the Reindeer Readathon. I talked about the Reindeer Readathon. It was one of the first videos that I did in December for Advent. And it is a month long readathon and it was hosted by Eric at Breakeven Books. I'll link his channel in the description box down below if you'd like to check him out and subscribe to him because he has con fun content all year long, but also does the Reindeer Readathon yearly. Will he do it next year? I don't know, but I hope so because it's fun and I like to do it. So if you want more information about him, you can check it out down below. I definitely read more books than just for the Reindeer Readathon this month because I also did Tis the Seasonathon and some of my books overlapped but not very many. So there's a lot of books that we're going to talk about today. The ones that I talked about in the Tis the Seasonathon wrap up I will send you in that direction and also that will be linked in the description box down below and then we'll go over the ones that we haven't talked about yet. For the Readathon I read 10 books with an approximate total of 2,755 pages. And when we get to the final book, you'll know why it's an approximate number of pages. So the first book that I read was for the prompt of Blitzen, and that was Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayburn. I gave that a 3.25 out of five stars. This book follows a group of four women who are in their 60s. They were recruited early in their well, I'd say late teens, early 20s to work for this organization that basically assassinates targets of people who do like human trafficking or people who were part of the Nazi regime, things like that. They are were trained to do these things without any governments being blamed for it or in most cases things are seen as accidents or what have you. So these ladies have been in this organization for 40 years. They've retired. They go on a cruise to kind of relax and enjoy and to, you know, celebrate having all of these years of success in their job. And once they get on the cruise, they realize that the company that they work for, the organization that they work for, has actually sent people after them and they are trying to kill them. And so the story follows them trying to figure out why their organization is trying to take them out and how they can evade people from the company. While I thought that the premise of this book was interesting because you don't very often see main characters in their 60s, especially ones who are doing the kinds of things that these women are doing, I really just thought the book was just okay. There wasn't anything about it that was like super fascinating or super interesting. It didn't have like um, a super quick pacing to it. It just was kind of there. I had a hard time telling the characters apart because it was like four ladies in that age bracket and they're, they had some differences, but it wasn't a Merlin tale. It wasn't anything specific. Overall, it was just a story about old lady murderers and how they help each other to get out of a pickle. And it just wasn't it wasn't fantastic. Then for Cupid, I read The Devouring Wolf by Natalie C. Parker. I gave that a four out of five stars. This book follows a group of young girls. It is a mid-grade, so the girls are like aged 11 to 12. They are part of this werewolf community where you have, I think, like three summers before you have your first turn into a werewolf. And all of these girls are on their last summer where if they don't turn, then they'll never turn. And they go to um, this big event where they're going, where everyone's supposed to be turning and none of the girls turn. And there is this old legend about a devouring wolf who was this creature that was able to devour the wolf changeling powers of people who had the wolf gene. I don't, it's a whole thing. It started off slow, but I did end up really enjoying it. I don't always love things about werewolves, but I think because this was more about the girls learning how to work together. Um, the book was more about like finding your pack, finding your place, figuring out where you fit in the world. And I think that's a very important thing for most young women and boys to go through um, when they're in their preteen and early teen years. So I think it definitely fits for that age group without being like completely out of left field. I did enjoy it. I had a fun time. I'm looking forward to the sequel next year and reading that and seeing how things continue for these kids for the prompt of Vixen and then also the additional prompt of Christmas lights. I read Charlie Brown Christmas. I give that like a two out of five stars. 
I don't like Charlie Brown Christmas. I read it because it was a prompt for Tis the Season of Thawne. If you want to know more, it's in that video. For the prompt of Dancer, which you can also see in the Tis the Season of Thawne vlog, was A Very Merry Romance by Lissa K. Adams. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This book follows, uh, well, I guess we should say this series follows a group of men who use romance books, or as they call them, manuals to help them understand the women in their lives and to help their relationships grow and to flourish and be better. This particular book is Colton's book. So if you've been reading the books for a while, you've probably seen Colton. He is our country singer and it follows Colton and Gretchen, who is actually an ex of one of the other guys. So my only real issue with this book is I think it could have been longer. I would have loved to have gotten more of our couples from the past. This book did very heavily focus on Colton and Gretchen, which is good because it's Colton and Gretchen's love story. Uh, but it would have been fun to have some more of the other couples as well. They were definitely there, but they weren't there as much as they have been in the past books. This was Grumpy Sunshine, complete banter the whole time. There were times where I was yelling out loud, literally yelling, I love this book. So, you know. It was good. I had a great time. Loved it. For the prompt of Donner, I read The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. I gave this a two out of five stars as well. This book follows a girl who works for a company that does like bodyguard services or protection services for um, political people, uh, celebrities, people who have enough money to pay for them. And she gets assigned to work for this movie star who is like had a falling out with his family and he wants her to pretend to be his girlfriend because he doesn't want his family to know that he has a bodyguard and of course you know fake dating trope leads to them wanting to date each other in real life that's the thing I did not like the main character straight from the get-go I had a lot of problems with the book from the very beginning I skim read a lot of it because I was having a terrible time my biggest issue with this book is that like at the very beginning, it's not a spoiler, it's what happens to start out the story. Um, the very beginning of the story, this girl's talking about how much she's in love with her boyfriend, who she works with. She's like, I love him. He's perfect. I can't believe like how wonderful he is. And we're just so in love and we're going to be together forever and yada, yada, blada, yada, blada. And it's like her mom just died like a couple of days before this. And it's like the day after her mom's funeral. And he breaks up with her and is like, he basically tells her that it's not like she really liked him anyway. And everyone hates her and thinks that she's a piece of shit human. And, you know, she didn't like him anyway. So it doesn't really matter that he's breaking up with her. Like, why should she even care? And then the very next day, which probably wasn't the very next day, but like the very next day, she's meeting like this celebrity movie star guy who she is like obviously her soulmate and they're gonna fall in love together and be together forever like not only does she have so much fucking trauma and baggage this bitch needs therapy but the love interest has just as much trauma and baggage there is some serious therapy that needs to happen I'm not saying these people don't deserve a happily ever after at some point but it should not have happened in the time frame within which the book took place okay next Star Eater by Kirsten Hall uh this was for the prompt of comet because it has a celestial word in the title i gave this a two out of five stars much like the bodyguard it actually got a three but because i skim read anytime i skim read anything i take a point down after i do my rating so this ended up with a two as well um this book is it's supposed to be about cannibal nuns and that was how it was sold to me and bethany led me astray but i will i mean she sent it to me so I'm not mad about it. I was like, Cannibal Nuns, cool. But it deals with so much more than that, but also not more than that. Honestly, it was a very boring for something that was like, Cannibal Nuns. Um, it was pretty boring. And there's a lot of issues with like, consent, the characters just kind of being weirdly shit people. Um, the world building, like there are things that just get mentioned in like the last couple of chapters about the world that we were supposed to know the whole time. But how the fuck were we supposed to know? Nobody told us. Um, there's also issues with um, the binary gender, uh, things like that, that just things that exist in this fantasy world that are kind of weird. There are a lot better reviews out there from people who are not cisgendered who can explain that more eloquently than I. Uh, so if you want to look more into that, there's definitely resources and information for you out there. But it just, like, the main, 
the main problem with the book is also the main answer of the like, have you ever asked a question and the answer to the question was part of the question that you asked? That's what this book was. Like there was a there was a clear answer and the answer was in the question. And I just didn't have a great time. But you know what? I did have a great time reading my prompt for Prancer. That was also my prompt for Christmas carols. And that is All Our Hidden Gifts by Caroline O'Donoghue. I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I fucking loved this book. Like full tilt, no stop, loved this fucking book. I may be doing a full review video for this book in December. Or in December? Wow, that's not the month we're in. In January, because I loved this so much and I want to talk about it so much because I've not heard anybody talk about it. So if you were here when I hauled this, I picked this up in October at uh, Mackinac Island when I was with the girls on a writing retreat because I seen this cover facing out on a shelf, picked it up, read the synopsis, fell in love. And I was like, this is my perfect book. Theoretically, because I haven't read it. Based off of the cover and the synopsis, this was a perfect book. I read it. It is a nearly perfect book. I loved it so much. This book follows Meve, our main character, who, while serving at attention at her Catholic school, finds a stack of tarot cards. And she starts using the tarot cards to read the fortunes of other students in her Catholic school. This book is set in Ireland, so they're Irish. It's an Irish Catholic school. should mention that. If you listen to the audiobook, the narrator has an Irish accent. It's great. Uh, but she finds the set deck of tarot cards. She starts reading people's futures. Um, things kind of seem to be working in her favor. And she ends up reading the fortune of her or the future, the fortune, whatever you want to say, of her ex-best friend who she has kind of, that was Merlin trying to dump on a desk and failing miserably. Um, she has really done a lot to kind of push herself away from this ex-best friend of hers because she's uncool and she wanted to be part of the cool crowd you know shit we all do when we're in high school and so she tells her fortune and the next day the girl goes missing so once lily the ex-best friend goes missing Maeve pairs up with fiona and ro ro is lily's brother and fiona is a friend that Maeve has made since she started doing the tarot readings and they search for Lily and try to find her throughout the book. And the book is kind of about discovering Lily and figuring out where she's at. And it sounds so light and fun. And yet, uh, this book has a lot of discussions and topics on things like homophobia, racism, um, just the way that, you know, you, when you're raised and your parents want you to be a specific way and you're not the way they want you to be. And there's a lot of things in this book, this really deep topics that this book touches and handles. There are two on page hate crimes that take place in this book. And I did do a full like spoiler list of um, what happens during those two hate crimes if you want to look that up before you pick up the book. And I also have a list of caution warnings on my review, which I, the review will be linked down below. But it does deal again with homophobia. And there is a lot of things in here, but it really is, it talks about so many things that are important to our teenagers in modern day and how this book does kind of make it seem like um, the magic is the reason for the hate in the world. But our characters, Fiona and Ro, definitely point out to Maeve, like, the magic didn't make the hate. The hate was already here. The magic just makes people like me, who look like me and Maeve, um, see the hate. People who are not necessarily othered by society because we're cis and het and white. And so the magic is what makes us see the things that other people have to live with on a regular basis. And it was a very interesting topic and like the way that it was worked into the story. And I, it, I fucking loved it. Like, this is one of my all time favorite books. It's so weird for a book I've never heard anyone talk about on booktube and I cannot shout about it enough. It's also witchy and creepy and deals with like a fucking swamp witch on a card. Like it is, it's so, it's so much. Like it is everything. Like it is fucking creepy and witchy and fun, but also all of the hard topics. And I just, I fucking loved this book, clearly, as we're still talking about it. 
for Prancer, I read the first volume of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, gave it a three stars. It's fine. I didn't love it. Um, mainly for me, I didn't love the art style. That's not a knock at the artist because they clearly are doing shit I can't do, but it's not my favorite. So probably won't continue on with that series, but I was interested to kind of see what it was um, before I like decided if I wanted to watch the TV show or not. Um, but I'm still not sure where I'm at with that. And then for the Dasher prompt and the Christmas star prompt, I read Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo. Finally, I think I read Six of Crows in 2020 or 2021. One of the two don't know which. Uh, finally made it to this beefy baby. I gave this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. If you don't know, and I don't know how you've made it on booktube this long, and you don't know, the Six of Crows duology is set in the same world as the uh, Grishaverse trilogy, which is the Shadow and Bone saga. They've changed the name of it. Whatever. Uh, set in the same world. This takes place mostly in Ketterdam, um, though the first book there's more traveling. Anyway, it's fine. There's six people who are skilled in specific things like uh, weapons, science, being really good at telling lies and breaking into things, magic, whatever it is that the Wraith does. I don't know, that bitch can scale walls with like her fingertips. I don't know, she's got like Spider-Man powers. But whatever the fuck, I think Matthias has just got size on his side. I don't know what his skill is. I don't know. Anyway, I don't have enough brain power right now for this. My point is, there's six people. They make this great group of six people who do some fucking shit. I, I feel like I should have liked this more than I did, as much as like all of my friends have loved this duology and this book in particular. And I liked it, but I didn't love it. I think that it was far too long and the pacing was a little all over the place. I loved the characters and I love the world building. I think they are fantastic. But my my biggest issue is with this series and this book in particular, when you're getting Kaz's schemes, like we get to hear Kaz's schemes on page. And so not always all of the scheme, but we get to hear the scheme on page. And so then they go to run the scheme and then something always goes wrong. But then we learned that Kaz had planned for it to go wrong and everything's actually going the way that he had originally planned. So everything's going to be fine. And that happens like 43 times in this book. So by the time we get to stuff where things aren't actually all going to be fine, I don't even, I'm not even, I'm like, it's, it'll be fine. It doesn't matter. Like there is legitimately a character death in this that really just didn't ever fully impact me because I was just waiting for the turnaround to come because it happened so many times. Like it was just this repetitive pattern over and over and over and over and over again in the book. And so I just got to this point where I was like, A, I can't trust Kaz, which who can? And B, everything will be fine in the end because it always is. And so it's like when you have a character death that doesn't impact you, and I know that that's not the case for everybody, it definitely impact impacted other people in other ways. It just didn't really hit me that much because I was like, eh, it'll be fine. And so when I found out it wasn't fine, I was like, oh, well, now I feel lied to again. So it was like, it just, I don't know. It was a really weird thing. I just felt like things were too stakes free feeling throughout the book. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. I grasp the concept that it doesn't make any sense, but it's the only sense that I can make. I liked the duology. I enjoyed it. I plan to continue reading this next series. I love Leigh Bardugo, even though I've DNF'd some of her books. I think she's a queen. I love her. Okay. And then the final prompt is slaying it. And for slaying it, you were just supposed to like do another prompt again. Um, one of the prompts, I don't remember which one, one of them was like either um, continue on or finish a series, whatever. Um, so what I did was I was CPing for Julie this month. So I counted that third book as my slaying it book. And when I did my tracking, I just put in a reread for book two. So my like my word count is actually the word count for book two. That's where I get into the approximate word countage. So when I put in the information, the page count was the page count from book two, not book three, because I don't know what the page count is of book three yet, because uh, it's not published, nor does it have a title or anything else fun. So, um, but I read the whole thing. I spent my time on it. So I wanted to use it for a prompt and I wanted to log it. So I logged book two instead of book three. That's what I did. Okay. These are some of the books 
that I read during the Reindeer Readathon. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!